So guys, the media strikes again. They're claiming that this uh, mother and child have been attacked by a dog. Uh, but today we're going to go through, we're going to break it down to give you a clear picture of the reality of the situation to kind of look past the manipulation of what the media is trying to say. So you'll see in this section right here, he started by saying that she screamed out thinking she was going to die. A family has been terrified as a young girl and her mother were attacked by an aggressive dog near their home in Sydney South. The schoolgirl was repeatedly bowled over, screaming out she thought she was going to die. A Sunday stroll home interrupted by a playful and powerful pooch. This stray dog charged at Nadia Tayubi and her seven-year-old daughter in Bardwell Valley. The young girl overcome by fear. I didn't hear that at all. I don't know if you guys hear it or not, but she was just screaming. Uh, you'll also see her like get down on the ground. You'll see the dog get down low um, with plenty of opportunity to actually attack. Uh, but you see the dog just goes in wondering what the hell she's going on about. So you'll see in this section, the, the, they say that the little girl's overcome by fear. The young girl overcome by fear. And that's true. But if you're scared of a spider, that's not the spider's fault for being a spider. So if the dog's being a dog and there's no actual attack, we can't then shift blame onto the dog. Now, if she's acting crazy and fearful, that's a problem that needs to be addressed with the child. It was just going at her, going at her. She was screaming and crying. Nadia tries to control and calm the canine, but it's not enough. Brothers Muhammad and Billy Zah run to help. As soon as I started running, I can hear the screaming. A grown man scared too. Oh, I even ran away from it. I came out to be a hero, I ended up being the victim. <sighs> so when someone says they run out, to be the hero but they turn into a victim and when you watch it he's just holding the collar of the dog and nothing's really happening i i just it's blowing my mind and i'm i'm sure it's blowing yours too that the insanity of this the the projection that this dog's being aggressive is just insane and these guys come out running with their shirts off like grabbing the dog and if you're scared of a dog you're truly scared of a dog like, yeah, if you're going to protect someone, you might step in and try and stop it. But I didn't see them, like, running away like he said he ran away. And, like, fearing for their life <laughs> from a dog being playful. <laughs> it's laughable. So when you have a child and your child overreacts in a situation... <laughs> the, dog, the child's overreacting for a reason. Now, if your child's never met a dog before, that's a lack of socialising your child because the world we live in, there's dogs everywhere. And if you haven't taught your child how to interact with the dog and what dogs might do and how to behave in front of the dog, that is the parent's fault. No one else's fault. Because if that child stood still, that dog wouldn't have even been reacting. That dog wouldn't have been running around trying to sniff and play. <laughs> Whether dogs are playing or planning to attack. If you're trying to avoid a dog, it's best to move a little bit sideways. Uh, turning your back and running is more likely going to stimulate that sort of predatory or excited response. Uh, when people give advice, uh, professionals give advice, they often just make stuff up. The problem with this, what was happening, is the child's moving around everywhere, which was stimulating the dog. Moving backwards, moving sideways, that's bad advice. So if a dog's overstimulated, the best thing is calm yourself and stay still. And don't scream. Don't overreact, because you're overreacting. It's crazy. Uh, so just be careful who you take advice from, because most of the people in this dog training world just make stuff up based on theories that they've made up in their head or they've heard from someone else. They're not getting it from real life experience um, where someone who really specialises in the work would know that basic fundamental to be less stimulating is to just stand still and be quiet. Uh, turning your back and running is more likely going to stimulate that sort of predatory or excited response. Okay, so this predatory thing I keep hearing and I've heard since the beginning of my career 
is absolutely crazy and one again, one of those made up theories. Dogs have been domestic for 10,000 years. Dogs have never, ever, ever been predators. Dogs have never lived off the land and been predators and lived off animals to survive. We feed them from a bowl, so they don't have a predatory instinct or response or anything like that. These are just made up myths that confuse people and it shouldn't be said, especially publicly like this. So again, the dog's just stimulated. Dogs chase a ball not because they're being a predator, because it's what we class as reactive drive. So the dog sees it moves, goes and gets it, grabs it, brings it back, and they control it. So when they see something moving, it, it causes a reaction. It's as simple as that. We call it reactive drive. Um, it's one of the things I turn off in dogs to help them be calmer, so they don't react to movement like that as much. Uh, but if you want your dog to do fetch, it's something that you create in your dog on purpose to get them to chase. Now, if these dogs chased balls and reacted and done chasing and you behave that way, then the dog is just going to react like a dog, being a dog. But as I said, and we'll say again, there's no aggression being displayed in that video. And this is coming from someone who's worked and specialized in aggression for nearly 22 years. And I've got about eight and a half thousand cases under my belt. So when I work with aggression, there's certain things I'll ask the client before I go out there to know if the dog's truly aggressive or not. And most people that have a dog think maybe the dog's not that aggressive. So I'll ask, does your dog bark? Right, because barking, uh, it, it can be a threat uh, and can be aggressive in manner. And that dog didn't bark. Um, lunging which would be pause on at a bare minimum the dog would have to put pause on like jump up and that could be aggressive in manner which the dog didn't do that either the dog kept its feet on the ground but at least a nip or a bite or growling or barking or something but everything this dog displayed was more on the submissive playful side you'll see the body goes low the tail's wagging low the dog's just stimulated in a in a kind of a nice playful manner so if you watch that back yourself really carefully you'll see the dog's not there's no attack there's no lunging the feet the feet doesn't go on the, the mouth doesn't go on that dog is big enough and powerful enough to easily just bite that kid within a split second and it didn't happen at all and if that kid's got scratches it would be from falling over because the parent tried to control or said that she tried to control the dog waving a jumper around is only going to stimulate the dog more she would have been better off controlling the movement of a child and then the dog wouldn't have been stimulated by anything but again maybe the parents need to be educated maybe it's not directly their fault per se but they should be responsible enough to go we live in a world where there's dogs let's go and learn at a, at a dog park let's go and talk to a professional uh, let's find out how do I be social around dogs? How do we approach? How do we avoid? And if a dog is stimulated in a situation like this, what's the best thing to do? And as I said, stand still. Don't stimulate an overstimulated dog. <laughs> uh, but again, just to finish up, you'll see the body language in the dog is quite submissive and just playful. And the dog didn't actually do anything aggressive at all. The dog just showed interest and was stimulated, and that's as far as it goes. So the media really needs to check themselves on this because when they do this, the biggest problem is it gives the council footing to now euthanize an absolute innocent dog. And I can't think of anything more wrong than this poor innocent dog losing its life because the incompetence and stupidity of some of the things that the media says and does just to mislead people just because they want a story. So hopefully you guys see the same thing I did uh, and you guys follow us, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and we'll see you next time.